Now in May, I saw the Iron Man Neon Genesis Evangelion, and it was this post-apocalyptic mecha. Well, it's more like post post apocalyptic and I got really into that series. A lot of people say it's like psychology 101 most of the time, which is why people get turned off by it, even the awesome action scenes. Well, me personally, I get the same reaction when people say that the Matrix has that pseudo-philosophy shit, that philosophy 101, that combination of postmodernism and uh, Buddhism and those ideas it's kind of like that because you see I know both have like similar things where the plot line is really formulaic even the plot twists and the dichotomy changes but the endings fucking suck well Unless you saw End of Evangelion, because I actually liked that ending. It was actually pretty fucking cool. And the Rebuild series, I don't know what they're going to do with that ending. But both have really crappy endings and shit like that to the general populace and public. But both because of pseudo-psychology slash pseudo-philosophy slash philosophy slash psychology 101 shit, it kind of throws people off and makes the story seem more complex than it actually is. I mean, I was able to understand the story. I wasn't mind fucked. And I enjoyed The Matrix and Neon Genesis Evangelion, for that matter. What I didn't really... What I'm trying to get to is, um... I saw... Gurren Log on the past month, like July and shit. It was a great ass anime. It's 27 episodes. That's really weird, but it was really cool. And it's another a couple. It's a, a mecha from Gainax, the same company. And Gainax actually probably made a series that was almost cooler than Neon Genesis Evangelion. I mean, it was sort of like a blast to pass to the old school mechas. It was a super mecha where there was a lot of shit that almost makes your eyes roll because it's so impossible. Like, they throw universes at the enemy and shit like that near the end. So, it's badass. It really is. Now, what I find interesting is near the end, like, the spirals. Now the spirals are basically it's normal functioning human civilization and how it quickly builds and expands and multiplies out of control. Now the spirals if they expand too much they'll get attacked by the anti-spirals which you may call the Marxists or things like that. This is the second time I'm basically throwing in product placements. Regardless, that's anti spirals. That's how I interpret them. They strike when the spirals really expand themselves and this and they sort of do this anti spiral thing where it's, it's supposed to reverse it that being said the first bad guy the bad guy that was basically attacking um, them in the beginning he's that weird guy that was making those little artificial dudes that didn't have spiral power and he was sort of like I forgot the names I don't really know the names of the deuteragonist tritagonist and protagonist but anyway he was like the first villain the one Simone beat like around episode 14 or 15 
Now what he did was to prevent this anti spirals from attacking, he basically created these asexual beings that can't reproduce and they were sort of like the top dogs and they kept the spirals down. They were trying to force them down, but eventually they couldn't because the spirals were too much. And that's when eventually the spiral, anti-spirals started attacking and shit. Um, sorry if I'm throwing you off. Basically, they reminded me of the nihilists that try and reach the ubermensch and use that ubermensch to keep everything under control and prevent the anti-spirals from attacking the spirals. It's kind of like that, except that's a negative interpretation on the Ubermensch and things like that, but I'm just going to go with this. Now, why are the anti-spirals attacking the spirals in the first place? Well, because if the spirals expand too much, then the spiral nemesis will appear. And I'm thinking, what the fuck is a spiral nemesis? Because when this series ends... You don't really get to see the action with the spirals versus the spiral nemesis. And I'm sure that it's going to be cool, but it's hinted that the next generation gets to face the spiral nemesis. Not the generation that had Simone in it. But if you look at it like that, I think it's pretty fucking cool. Like, Spiral Nemesis is sort of supposed to be the consequence of Spiral Power, where the anti-spirals are an attempt to hold spirals back, which does a lot of unnecessary, ridiculous damage and doesn't really solve anything. If you think about it, the Spiral Nemesis is just another expansion on that. Only this time, the sp I mean, you can say that Gurren Logon has that eternal conflict thing, where whenever there's a spiral, there's something that's trying to prevent that spiral energy from coming to prevent something else that'll hold it back and damage everything as well. Kind of like this thing I read earlier this morning that from this book by Joyce Appleby, where it says that the shadow of any capitalist culture is going to be an anti capitalist culture. Whether it's a new theory, it's branded as a new theory, or it's basically the continuation of an old idea or old ideal. And that's kind of interesting because it's like this spiral energy thing could be applied to a lot of things we speak about now. I mean, it's a very interesting general philosophy. I mean, it could be applied to dialectics. It could be applied to the political system we're seeing, social movements. And Gurren Lagann's a pretty interesting show because none of this was sort of the intended plot. You see, the show has a linear plot, but it's a broken linear plot. It starts you in the future and pushes you in the past to see how it all happened. But then the future is different. The writer sort of got lost. It was supposed to be like a different epic feel to it. But it's still kind of badass. So what I'm trying to get to is basically Gurren Lagann is fucking awesome. You should go ahead and see that shit. And if you don't see that shit, it's probably because you're pussy, but I mean, the whole spiral philosophy thing, I thought it was at first philosophy 101 type shit. Kind of like 
Neon Genesis Evangelion was Psychology 101, and The Matrix was Philosophy 101 as well, but Spiral, Spirals and Spiral Philosophy is actually very interesting and cool. The interpretation of human civilization as a spiral and how we're expanding and maybe not even human civilization, but life on Earth, natural life. Interpretations of things such as maybe fascism, Marxism, and whatever the hell the spiral nemesis is supposed to represent. All of that is very interesting and kind of makes me think that, you know what? Life is fucked up. And it's going to be fucked up forever. But it all makes for a very interesting series, like, that's one thing I disliked about Gurren Lagann, it was so interesting that, um, and expansive that, oftentimes I just wanted it to slow down so I can get a better feel for the characters and things like that, understand them a little bit more, understand little details about them, but that doesn't happen, it just, the story starts and you run with it. Anytime it seems like it's going to just calm down, time skip, we move towards crazier times. And that is, like, has an express exception in the flashback episodes, but other than that, you should go watch it and shit. None of this is alcoholic. I'm slurring because I'm me. And shit. Senator Mr. Wonka 7 video SD.